Welcome. In this video, I will be building a bubble chart in Excel from scratch. We'll be building a bubble chart that looks like this on the screen here. And I'll be talking about the key components involved in building this bubble chart, which I have listed here. And at finally, towards the end, I will actually talk about one of the common issues with bubble charts, which is overlapping bubbles and some recommendations on how to address that. In a previous video, I already talked about the benefits of a bubble chart with four different types of analysis that we could do effectively and efficiently with a bubble chart. If you haven't watched that video, I will put a link to that. A bubble chart is a very effective data visualization technique when it comes to analyzing relationships between three different numeric or quantitative variables. So let's go to Excel, start from scratch and build this bubble chart now. So now I have opened Excel and I have the sample data set here. And it's a very simple one, which has uh, six different products. For each of the products, how much marketing expenses did we put in? How much sales did we get in return? And also how much profit did we make in each of those products? With this simple example, let's click on any cell outside this data set. So don't click on the data, click in outside because we want to fully understand how Excel builds these charts, right? So go to insert under the charts ribbon here, you will see bubble, choose the first one. And now we have opened one, but obviously it's empty because we don't have any data given to this chart. So I right clicked, select data, and this is where we're going to tell Excel what data is going to be used to build a bubble chart. This is the important step. So I will click on add a series. And it will give me this dialog box to connect the data. So for a series name, in this case, I'm just going to type in effect of marketing expenses on sales and profit. And then I'm going to choose the X values, which is the first variable and this needs to be the independent variable an independent variable is something that we believe has an effect or we want to understand if it has an effect on a dependent variable so in this case if we increase the marketing expenses can we get more sales can we get more profit so in this case marketing expenses is the independent variable and then sales we believe could be depending on marketing expense. So sales becomes a dependent variable. So we plot the independent variable in the X axis. And then for the Y, we will select the sales in this case. And then for the last one, which is a bubble size. So this is where a bubble chart is different from a scatter plot because we can control the size of the bubble you, with data. And so here I'm going to choose the profit cells as my series bubble size. That's it. So now we have provided the data to Excel for this chart. I'm going to hit OK and hit OK. There we have it. So the basic default bubble chart has appeared. Your bubble chart's color may look different. So I'll explain a little bit about how you can modify the color. This is just a the color theme that I have in my Excel put as default. So it looks like that to me, uh, but you can definitely change it according to your needs. So, so far we talked about the X axis, the Y axis, uh, also the how to control the size of the bubble. Now, the next important thing is a chart title. Because we entered the series name, it series name will automatically appear as a title. But if you, in case you want to come back and change it, you can definitely do something like that. So you can edit it directly on display. The next item I want to touch on is a axis labels. Remember that the key principle, guiding principle for us is whoever is the user of this chart or a visual, whoever is going to be the audience. It is absolutely critical. They understand the message and the information of this visual correctly as well as quickly. That is our objective. So if somebody looks at this chart, it's not very clear what is the x-axis, what is the y-axis. You and I know because we are building it, but once it's going to be shared with somebody, it's absolutely critical that they know and interpret the data correctly 
and quickly. So uh, definitely add data label. So click on the chart area and you'll see a plus and you do a plus and now I can actually select axis titles. The x-axis title would be the marketing expense. So I can tap it this way. And then on the y-axis would be sales. Now I have given the axis labels. Next would be axis bounds. Axis bounds are nothing but the minimum and the maximum for each axis. So you can see that there is like negative 20,000, negative 2,000, and they're overlapping. Anyway, it doesn't look right. So what I'm going to do here is go and click on this axis, right click, format axis, all the formatting options, like anything on the chart, if you right click on it, you'll see the menu to open the formatting and a, a side panel will appear. This is where all the controls are available for formatting. So in this case, I right clicked on the X axis. So you can see that I am in the horizontal or X is horizontal. So horizontal value axis. Now here I can control the minimum. And if I know that I'm not going to have any negative value here, then it's better to put a minimum of zero. So I'm going to put zero here and hit enter. And now you will see that the X axis starts from zero. I want to do the same for Y axis. So I can click on the Y axis here and now change again the bound to zero. So now the X axis and the Y axis both start from zero. Similarly, if I have a maximum bound, uh, then I can do the same. There is a maximum bound option also. Okay. Let's talk next about the color of the bubble. Um, so right click on the bubble, one of the bubbles, and then choose format data series. And now we can go to the fill and line. So this sub menu under formatting here, this is where the colors are being given to the bubble. So I can change it to the solid fill and I can choose one of these colors to change my bubble. And I can also change the border of the bubble. If I don't want any border, I can choose no line. So now I have a borderless green color bubble. Now the next one I want to touch on is the data label. Data labels are nothing but labels that appear on the data on the chart visuals here. In this case, it's a bubble. So it'll appear on the bubble and we can control what data we want to show. So I'm going to hit plus, choose data labels. And now you see that it automatically is showing the, you know, Y axis or the sales amount over there. In my case, I actually would prefer, so I'm clicking on the data label. You can also do right click format data labels and it'll open up this menu here. And you can choose, do you want to display the Y value? Y value is the sales. And I can choose instead of the Y, I can choose the bubble size. The reason why I like this is because I can already visually see the X and the Y on the chart here because it's horizontal and vertical orientation. However, the profit information is based on the size of the bubble. It's understanding the differences precisely between the size of the bubble is not easy from, you know, from a human perception point of view. Um, you know, just because this is this big, this is 5,000, this is 25,000. Can I quickly make out like what the difference is without knowing the number? So if I don't have the labels, can I make the profit difference that easily? It's a little bit harder for me. So when I do the data labels and you saw that Excel is going back to the default again and again, I want to go back again and say, no, I don't want the Y, show me the bubble. So again, if you need to show the Y axis value or the X axis specifically, you can choose uh, in this option settings here. I'm going to choose the bubble you know, size because I want to show the profit on the um, data label. But basically, we can control the data labels this way. Another thing I like to do in this example is to show the product name itself because we have only six bubbles here. And, you know, when we have six product names, I would like to show them on the visual itself. So if I can choose this option called value from cells 
And then Excel will allow us to say, okay, which values do you want to show? And this is a great feature in Excel where I can actually choose the product names. And remember, I can choose any six cells here and whatever I want to communicate. And um, an important setting that you need to know here is that by default, it is doing product name, comma, profit. And if I, if I don't want it to be next to each other, there's an option called new line. And when I do that, now it'll go one over the other. So it actually looks a little bit better. And I can also do above the bubble or below the bubble so that it doesn't, you know, take over. Again, choose, you know, what makes sense. Depending on the distribution of the data itself, you can choose which option is better um, as long as it's all clearly visible to the user. So if I do center, for example, come back to center option here, I can still see clearly. And if I don't want the profit to be displayed, if I do this, then this is a good visual also where I can see the product uh, name on the bubble itself. And if your product name is very long, um, you could definitely abbreviate it so that it doesn't take up a lot of space on the chart. Again, keep in mind that the usability and the understandability of the chart to the viewer or the audience is the absolute number one priority. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the data labels. You can control all of them here. Another one I wanna talk about here is the grid lines. Grid lines are these lines that you can see, thin lines, both horizontally and vertically, and you can control that. My general recommendation would be to make it not overpower or take up too much of the attention of the users and make it too busy so that the users are getting not getting a clear picture, right? But I do like having the grid lines because it does provide the help to orient where the bubble is vertically and horizontally. So I do like them. I just don't like them to be very, very uh, taking up a lot of um, ink space or attention from the user to distract them. So let's go with the, when I choose the major grid lines, uh, I think you might have noticed so far that there are multiple ways to get to the menu. I can go this way and also right clicking directly on the line here. And now I can do format grid lines. I come to the same spot. So now here, this is the automatic. What I like to do is to choose one of these, you know, two, it looks like I already have chosen recently, um, but I like to choose something which is less dark. And so I can choose the other vertical lines here and also choose the same. So now you'll see that they are still with there, but not taking up a lot of our attention. Please note that what Excel calls as vertical. So this one, for example, is horizontal axis major grid lines. These are vertical from top to bottom. And then when you go to the vertical axis grid lines, it's basically going horizontally on screen. Anyway, just the little nuance that we need to know. So that's the grid lines. Next, let's talk about the legends. Um, one thing I don't necessarily like is the fact that the legend for the size of the bubble, it's not automated or it's not automatic, at least not that I can find in Excel. If you do have a suggestion, please post them in the comments. What I did was just to add a text box. So insert a text box, and then I will just go in and open a text box right on the chart. And then I will just type in size of bubble equals profit or something like this, where the user clearly knows what, is, what does the size of the bubble mean. And you can Put them in the spot for example i can move the title a little bit to the left and make spot or if you have another let me just do that okay so i moved that over there so i have a little bit of a little bit of a room to move my text box and i can then even make it a little bit bigger so i can do okay and then i want to just change the color of it just because I don't, I want to make sure that it's very clearly visible to the user, but the size of the bubble is the representing the profit for the products. Okay, so that's the, those are the legends. 
As I promised at the beginning, I want to talk a little bit about the overlapping bubbles problem, which is very common. In this example, I, I purposely chosen so there's no, they're not overlapping, right? But let's say, for example, our data is a little bit different, and I'm going to choose, I'm going to just modify the data a little bit. Okay, so now you can see that the bubble A and B are kind of overlapping, and you don't really see the A very clearly, and imagine when you have a little bit more, then you can see the problem of overlapping bubbles, right? There are a couple of things I want to mention about the uh, solutions that you can try. One is the size of the bubble. So if I click on the and do format data series, you will see that there is an option to change the scale of the bubble size. And this is this applies to all the bubbles. Okay, so now I'm going to say, let's say I do 50. And now you see that the bubble A and B are not that overlapping. And so this is again, this may not work for all cases, but this may work in some cases. So you have control over the scale of the bubble sizes, you can control it this way. That's one option. Um, the other option, if I go back to 100, and there's another option of controlling the transparency. So if I click on the bubble again and choose right click again and choose format data series, I have an option to go to fill where we, we you saw how we chose the color. There's an option called transparency, which for example, I'm going to do 30% and it applies transparency. And now the the bubble uh, is a little bit more. I'm not saying that you are completely eliminating the overlap, but Let's see, for example, if I do 50%, and now I can at least see the outline of the bubble A, which I didn't see before. So just be aware that you have the option to change the transparency and also the size of the bubble if you're running into the overlapping uh, bubble situation. If you have any example data sets where you're running into that problem, I would really love to hear from you and hopefully we can find a solution. So please put in your questions in the comments below. So just to recap, in this video, we started with the blank sheet with just the data and we have created a bubble chart and we talked about the key components that you need to know and understand in order to create a bubble chart in Excel. And now we can see that there is a relationship between marketing expenses and sales because the bubbles are in a diagonal line. This is the benefit of visualizing the data instead of a table in a chart like a bubble chart. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.